So when you look at a triangle to use the trig ratios, it's important that you know what the opposite and the adjacent sides are. The hypotenuse is pretty easy to find because, again, the hypotenuse will always be across from the right angle. So in this case, the hypotenuse, and in most cases, it's just been standard that we label the hypotenuse with C. In geometry, when they draw triangles and they label the vertices of a triangle, this is red triangle ABC, they label the vertices of the triangle with points or capital letters, and across from the angle side, they'll label it usually with its lowercase counterpart. So across from angle A is side A, across from angle B is side B, across from this right angle C is side C. Again, because that's the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. And if I'm looking here at angle A, I would go across from A to find the opposite side. The thing about opposite sides and adjacent sides are it depends on the angle that you're looking at. They specifically said find the sine of A. So A is the angle that I'm going to start with, and I'm going to go opposite or across from A. The remaining side is the adjacent side. Whatever's left is the adjacent. But what you have to remember is the adjacent and opposite can flip-flop, again, depending on the angle. If I was interested in the sine of B, then B would be the opposite side and A would be the adjacent. So you have to be real aware of the angle that you're looking at. But for here, opposite of A, hypotenuse is the longest, the remaining side is the adjacent side. If I want the sine of A, I take the length opposite and I put it over the hypotenuse. So in this case, it would be A over C. The cosine of A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so this would be B over C, and you just write it as a fraction. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's A over B. Now again, I want to draw some pictures because I want to stress the fact that depending on where your angle is, the angle of interest that will determine which side is your opposite. So if my triangle looks like this, right triangle looks like this, do your best to draw a triangle that looks like, well, maybe I should show you, hey? It's keeping it secret. Do your best to draw a triangle that looks like that. If I am interested in this top angle, which I call X, then the side across from that would be the opposite. Hypotenuse, again, is always the... And adjacent is always the remaining. But in that same triangle... If I am interested in the bottom angle, then my opposite will switch positions. I, I know that I'm repeating this concept a lot because it's one that people get tricked up on a lot. Be aware of the angle that you're interested in. The hypotenuse will always be again across from the right angle. And depending on the angle of interest, that would be my opposite side. The remaining side is adjacent. So look closely when you're setting up your um, ratios. So in this right triangle, again, we'll give that another look. If I'm interested in G, then across from G is my opposite. I just put an O usually. 
Across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. The remaining side is the adjacent. And then when I use that shortcut SOHCAHTOA, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, I can find the sine of G just by looking at the letters that I assigned to the sides. So G opposite, this would be 15 over 17. G, um, cosine of G is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of G is opposite over adjacent. I'm going to change colors for the next one. If I'm interested in T, then T's opposite is 8. The hypotenuse never changes. The remaining side is the adjacent. I changed my color to blue on this one. So when I'm looking at T, the sign of T, it would be 8 over 17. Cosine is 15 over 17. Tangent is 8 over 15. Are you guys okay with what I'm doing? Does that kind of, you can follow? We're going to be doing some math with it shortly, but we need to know how to label things in order to use sine, cosine, and tangent. Once we get comfortable with that, then I will um, show you how to use the calculations and the calculator for it. Okay? So, let's move down to our next few. Is everybody caught up? Okay. All right. So it says here, first of all, find the missing side. So if one leg is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5 and I don't have any angles labeled, how can I find the missing side? Yep. Pythagorean theorem. Absolutely. Now I have up here in the front of the classroom something called Pythagorean triples. These are all the nice whole numbers that make perfect right triangles with no decimals or radicals involved. So if I know 3 and 5, the two short, or the shorter side, 3 and 5 is the hypotenuse, the longest side is always the hypotenuse, what does the missing leg have to be for without even doing Pythagorean theorem? So I know my missing side is 4, but let's say I didn't remember that, or let's say I'm not here and I couldn't find that, then I just do 3 squared plus, plus x squared equals 5 squared. That gives me 9 plus x squared equals 25. So x squared is 16. When I take the square root of both sides, I get 4. That's how I get that side. So if you're not he here or you don't remember the Pythagorean triples, Pythagorean theorem can find that missing side. All right, now that I have the missing side labeled, I'm interested in D, angle D. So what side is opposite angle D? Four. The length of the side opposite angle D is four. What side is the hypotenuse in this triangle? Which one can I label H? Perfect. And then the remaining side is the adjacent. So let's set up the sign. Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So again, it's so ka toa. Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. I write it as a fraction four fifths. What's the cosine? Three-fifths. And what's the tangent? Four over three. Nice job. 
For the next one, I'm given two sides. What's, what do you notice about the two sides? They're both threes. The legs are the same. What kind of triangle must this be? 45, 45, which means what's the hypotenuse? Three times the square root of two. Beautiful. Okay. We're interested in angle D again. So opposite angle D, hypotenuse, remaining side is adjacent. What's the sine of D? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So what's my ratio for the sine of D? 3 over 3 times the square root of 2. I need to simplify this, so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. That gives me 3 times the square root of 2 over 3 times 2. My 3's will cancel out. And I end with the square root of 2 over 2. Let's go ahead and do cosine. What is the ratio for cosine? Same. Do I have to go through the whole process of simplifying? Nope, I already have the answer. What about tangent? 3 over 3 equals perfect. What's special about C as a triangle? What do you notice? What do you recognize? This one's always a little bit more difficult to recognize, but what do you notice? The hypotenuse is twice the length of the short side. The hypotenuse is twice the length of the short side. That makes this a 30, 60 right triangle. So what's the missing side? Four times the square root of three. Perfect. Four times the square root of three. Now we're interested in angle Z. Which side is opposite Z? Perfect. Where's the hypotenuse? What's the remaining side? We call that the adjacent. Oops, I put A instead of O. I don't know why I did that. That's O. Okay. So what's the sign? 4 over 8. Reduce it. 1 half. Beautiful. What's the cosine? Four times the square root of three over eight. Reduce it. Square root of three over two. What's the tangent? Four over four times the square root of three. Rationalize the denominator. Cancel out the fours. And we end up with our simplified form. All right, so setting up those fractions is going to help us when we do the solving, and that's where we're going next. We're going to be solving for triangles. We're going to be finding missing sides and missing angles. Is this what your page looks like? No. Okay, good. So let's practice using our calculator. Let's turn it on. And when we use our calculator to do sine and cosine, most of your calculators are pretty straightforward. A handful of you might have a calculator where you have to do things backwards. So let's make sure we know which calculator we have. For mine, if I want to find the sine of 13 degrees, first I make sure my calculator is in degrees, which we did that at the beginning. I hit sine 13 equals, and it'll spit out this icky looking decimal. So my icky decimal is 0.22495. It said 
Find the trig ratio accurate to four decimal points using your calculator. Well, that nine would raise up to a 10. So this is rounded to 0 0.2250. You guys remember rounding? We're okay with that? Okay. Now, if you couldn't put it in this order, if you hit sign 13 and your calculator came up with something different than this, then there are two things that could happen. Either A, you're not in degrees, or B, you need to enter it opposite in your calculator. Meaning, you would have to, and that's how my calculator is that I typically use, I have to put the angle in first and then hit the sign. And then it'll give me my thing. So make sure you know which calculator you have. Does, is anybody not able to get this decimal? Did we all figure it out? Okay, good. All right, so then let's do the cosine of 84. Cosine 84 equals, that is, 0 0.1045. Tangent 27, 0 0.5095. Still, hey, it must have been a terrible event. Okay. That's probably my phone because my phone's way behind everything. I never did anything. All right. So in this particular problem, what we want to do is we want to be able to find X and Y. And I have to do both of those problems individually. So I'll start with X. I'm going to go across from the angle. This is the angle I know, 24. So across from that angle is the opposite. The hypotenuse is obvious. And the remaining side is the adjacent. Because I know the hypotenuse, I have the angle, and when I'm finding x, I want to find the opposite. Which trig function will I use? Which one uses the opposite and the hypotenuse? So, so yep, it's so ka toa. So, which trig function is S? Sine. We pronounce it sine. So, when I set this up, I would say the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so to solve for x, I solve this just like I would any old equation. I'd multiply by 10, multiply by 10. So in my calculator, I will hit 10 times the sine of 24. Hit equals. I get my answer, 4.067. I'll just stop there. It doesn't say. We could even just stop that about 4.1. So 4.0673, blah, 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 gives me my x. If I want to solve for y, y is the adjacent side. So when I set this up, I'm going to use the adjacent and the only side I know, the hypotenuse, or that's labeled on here. This time I have to use cosine to solve. So my equation would be the cosine of 24 equals y over 10. So it's really important that you pay attention to things. Multiply by 10, multiply by 10. When I plug it in my calculator, I get 10 times the cosine of 24, 9.135-ish. You got an error? Yeah. Cosine.
You might have hit something wrong. Yeah. Did she, did she get it to work? Yeah. Is she magic? Yeah, she's magic. Way to go. Okay. Let's work through our next one. The angle I have is 32. I need to find X and Y. Across from 32 is the opposite. This time, Y is the hypotenuse. And the other side that's given is the adjacent. So to solve for x, I need to use the adjacent side. So which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So the tangent of 32 is equal to x over 13. How do I solve? I'm going to show on this calculator just in case somebody has this calculator today. Um, remember, if you're plugging it in on this kind of calculator, you have to do it backwards. So I'd have to do 13 times 32 tangent and then hit equals. So 8.123. Does anybody agree with me? Seem reasonable? Okay, good. So let's do the next one. Now I need to find y. y is the hypotenuse. And so I'm going to use the adjacent again. I need to find the hypotenuse. Which trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So the cosine of 32 is equal to 13 over y. Beware. I cannot just multiply the 13 out. I, what I have to do is, and 13 divided by 13 won't work either. What I have to do is flip-flop these two, their position. Essentially, I'm going to show you all the algebra, and then I'm going to show you what I would do shortcut-wise. So I have to times the y over. So I'd get y times the cosine of 32 equals 13, and then divide the cosine out. So y ends up being 13 divided by the cosine of 32. So what I usually do is, at this point when I set it up, I just go right to this. I flip-flop it right away. I move the y to where the cosine is, and I move the cosine to where the y was. I don't go through all that algebra. You can. I'm not going to stop you, but it's real easy to just flip-flop their position because that's essentially what you end up doing, okay? And so then I can do that problem by dividing. This one is 13 divided by the cosine of 32. And so I end up with 15.329. 15.329. Here is my general rule, and you may want to just jot this down in a little bubble in the corner of your paper. Okay? If the variable is on top, multiply. If the variable is on the bottom, then you're going to divide. And it's always going to be the side times the trig or the side divided by the trig. By the trig, I mean the sine, the cosine, or the tangent. Does that make sense? So the side number has to go in first. It's the side times the sine, cosine, or tangent, or the side divided by the sine, cosine, or tangent. At the order matters a lot there. All right. 
I'm going to let you guys try a few on your own.